Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night. Welcome back here to another update on this uh, beautiful evening here. It is March 18th, 2024. It's about 9.52 p.m. here, California time. Latest activity shows a 1.4 into the Southern California area. Now, I am getting some reports of an earthquake hitting the Oklahoma area. It is listed up here from uh, the... If you just do a, a quick Google search here, looks like an earthquake alert was issued for Android earthquake alert systems there. Um, so not seeing anything yet in terms of the magnitude out here. EMSC not picking up on that yet either. Uh, nor is the uh, Oklahoma site here that monitors the activity out here in, in the region. So just have to wait and see when it comes in. I was looking at a handful of stations out here uh, in the Oklahoma City area, and there's definitely been, there's the, uh, this looks like the most recent earthquake right here, uh, listed up there. Kind of hard to tell on this graph exactly how big it is, but it is, uh, definitely a legit earthquake, because folks were, uh, uh, letting me know they felt some shaking. Also, some previous activity out here as well. Looks a little bit, uh, smaller than the earthquake we're seeing right now, uh, but I do want to double check a couple stations here around the region there's that little it showed up just barely over here on this seismograph station so I, I don't think it's a big earthquake um, I'm guessing maybe a three or four potentially but if you look over the past 24 hours here uh, these are definitely some earthquakes out here striking around the area of the uh, Shawnee area it looks like now surprisingly they're not really showing um, any of that new activity from today this is all over the past 30 days, but nothing in the last week, nothing in the last day. But I, I just showed you guys uh, some, some readings there. Let's check over here across this area. Last 24 hours, there's a little bit larger activity over there. And also some, again, that's picking up pretty nicely right here uh, across the area, much uh, closer to the OKC area. So it's possible this thing could be... Uh, Maybe a four-pointer or so. We'll, we'll just have to wait. I'm really surprised they haven't uh, kicked anything up yet in terms of the magnitude. Not even the EMSC picking up on this earthquake yet. So, uh, we'll wait. We'll check back on that here in just a little bit. Let's see what we got here for worldwide activity. Let's check on Iceland here real quick and see what's going on with the latest information up there. Uh, live from Iceland for a webcam view of the area. Still shows some active act, uh, active vents out here. Uh, doesn't look like it's died off much here compared to the last day or so. Um, definitely still got some fountaining going on. Uh, so this is definitely quite a bit of magma volume that's being produced uh, a lot in creating these lava fields. The latest information here from the Icelandic Med Office. Um... I'm pretty certain they haven't put anything new out yet, but just let me double check here and see. Uh, this was put out, looks like earlier today. Uh, really no new change here to the area. Uh, I don't believe it's reached to the sea yet. It's very slow in terms of the lava flow that's going on there. Uh, but we'll continue to watch that and uh, see how it plays out. This was from... Um, last night it looks like here but either way the magma uh, or the uh, lava the main lava front here is very slow uh, heading out towards the sea area i don't think it's going to get there but you never know got to continue to watch that all right let's get back into earthquake activity see what we got here for the latest information uh, if you look here on the yellowstone station here it picked up i think a reading See that little sharp spike there? It picked up a reading, I believe, from Oklahoma City area, unless they had an earthquake at the same time as the Oklahoma folks did. Kind of an odd one. Double check here the uh, seismograph stations here. There's some wind events from earlier. Um, I'm not seeing any sign of that uh, earthquake popping up here, so it's a little strange. All right, well, uh, we'll definitely uh, keep an eye on it before the end of this video. Hopefully they update it. All right, as uh, far as California goes, a handful of smaller quakes out here. Really nothing big going on. Uh, we did see a, a three-pointer 
Uh, let's see. Did they keep it as a three-pointer? Uh, they did. 3.4 here uh, around the Pinnacles area. That is just off of the creeping segment here of the San Andreas Fault. They also seen a 2.8 roughly uh, a few seconds later. So definitely getting some adjustment going on here across the plate boundary. Nothing big, uh, but a handful of uh, quakes here kicking up in the last couple hours. Northern California, not so much inland. We did have a three-pointer off the uh, coast here. 3.8 to be exact. Well off the uh, coast of Eureka. That's on the plate boundary of the Gorda Plate, which is right here. And the Pacific Plate to the south. Into the Pacific Northwest. Handful of smaller quakes up here. Some around Mount Rainier. Nothing really major going on uh, for now. Up into Montana, outside of Helena. Got a 2.1 coming near, in near the Lincoln area of Montana early this morning. Montana does see some earthquakes. And it does, uh, you know, from time to time get a few few small ones and occasionally some big ones but for now just a handful of smaller quakes out here across the area we just checked out Yellowstone not a whole lot going on there for now uh, the rest of the country as you can see um, still waiting on the uh, earthquake there from Oklahoma so it's just a little odd there was obviously a quake it's showing up but uh, nobody jumping on it to report uh, to report about it uh, a little bit of movement outside the Denali area, mostly smaller microquakes out there. A handful of deep quakes and surface adjustment quakes taking place up there, nothing big. Uh, across the area of the Western Pacific. Uh, 4.9, the latest quake down here into the Indonesia Islands area. That's the blue circle down there. And uh, some earthquake activity popping off here just around the Japan area. Um, you know, this Japan sees fours and fives pretty much on any given week. Um, so for, you know, this is not any big activity, uh, for the Japan folks there. They're used to, uh, much bigger quakes, uh, up here across the Kuro Kamachaka Trench, still waiting on some major movement out here. We haven't really seen it, but we're still seeing some, uh, some deeper quakes showing up here with this 4.7, about 50 kilometers deep here into the area. Uh, further down south into the Guam area, we did see a 4.6. Mostly uh, mostly just some light movement out here in the last 24 hours across the western edge, or the eastern edge of the Filipino plate. Uh, a little clustering going on here across the Indonesia Islands area, but uh, nothing major. There's some adjustment taking place here across the southern end of the Kermadec Trench. Fairly shallow earthquake, though. Looks like a 5.5. USGS is picking up on it and reporting it as a 5.5 right at the um, well, the surface of what it looks like, right across the Kermadec Ridge, south of the Kermadec Islands. Uh, New Zealand seeing a handful of earthquakes as well with uh, a couple three stirring up out there. So let's go check out the GeoNet servers here real quick and see what we have for the latest data on New Zealand. 3.2 about three hours ago. A three-pointer outside of Wellington. These guys, these guys are definitely seeing some earthquake activity out here. It's just been uh, right around the two to three magnitude range. No major quake activity out here, but uh, you know, still seeing uh, some deeper movement. This is a 440 kilometer deep there, well north of the North Island area. But uh, yeah, we'll continue to watch that. Kind of curious to see if that five-pointer showed up on some of these drums there across New Zealand uh, that's barely showed up I'm gonna be uh, this signature right here but I guess that earthquake is uh, a ways away from that station here well up along the Kermadec uh, trench so we'll continue to watch that South America area not uh, seeing really any major activity a handful of smaller quakes out here in the last 24 hours same for the middle America trench uh, with some threes and fours stirring up out there 5.5 hitting the uh, Afghanistan area, it looks like, earlier today. Also, uh, some movement striking out here around Turkey and the Mediterranean. Looks fairly active out here today in this region. And, uh, of course, some further activity north of Iceland here. The Pretty much the northern uh, top of the globe here with that 3.6. A little bit of activity out there across the Azores as well. 
Nothing else going on out there across the Atlantic Ocean. It looks uh, fairly quiet. Again, Iceland, uh, you know, this is kind of a lengthy eruption event here compared to the last couple eruptions. The key, uh, I think the key factor is because it's built up more uh, volume of magma. We had a little bit longer time frame out here um, compared to the last couple eruptions. Um, yeah, so these there are reports of nearby shaking check back soon for more information from official sources but well i don't see anything from the official sources it's a monday night maybe uh i, I don't know it's got to be someone that can look at it right we see it we definitely see it showing up here on the graph let me refresh this here make sure i don't see anything showing up but if you look at some of these seismograph stations here um across the area uh there it is right here that's literally within the last half an hour or so. There was some previous activity as well in this region. So earthquake activity popping up, but not being reported uh, either by the EMSC or the USGS. It's kind of odd. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're missing a lot of earthquakes out here on the map for Oklahoma. All right, uh, let's check out space weather because I know things are going to get uh, interesting here with... Uh, Two very active regions coming into the Earth-directed views, 3614 and 3615 here. Now, of course, 3614 is the former sunspot, 3590, that gave us the largest flare of this solar cycle back when it, uh, before it went back around the sun. So this is a second trip around here facing the Earth, and uh, it still looks fairly active. Let's look at the most recent data uh, it does have a, a neat little center core here, a magnetic structure. It's a very large sunspot, so we still got to watch out for that. Also down here, notice the intermixing of this regional sunspot here. That's been the source of a couple different M flares here recently. And uh, some of these active regions over here look like they may be uh, starting to gain some strength. We'll have to watch that. Uh, right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 40, X flare around 5% chance or so. And... Um, yeah, there's that M flare that popped off here from 36. Uh, that's from 3615 on the far side. Eastern limb right there. 6.7. That's pretty uh, pretty decent flare. We'll continue to watch that and report back on anything major going on. Looks like a little prominence eruption here across the southwestern limb of the sun. And, uh, you know... Things could happen. We could definitely see some uh, solar flaring activity. Um, so, have you guys heard about the um, the Devil Comet? Now, that's kind of a, a, a fairly large comet that could possibly be visible during the eclipse, the total eclipse here, uh, here on April 8th. It is a comet uh, known as the Devil Comet, or 12P slash Ponds Brooks. It's a 10.5 mile wide ball of ice and rock that circles the sun on a highly elliptical or stretched orbit roughly every 71 years. So it's coming back around the bend here. Give us another uh, look at it. It does have some interesting features with it, uh, creating some uh, cryovolcanic activity. Basically what happens um, is when uh, the sun, right, solar radiation uh, kind of uh, affects the comet, cracks open these large fissures in its nucleus, causing it to spray its highly pressurized icy insides known as cryomagma into space. So when this happens, it looks like the... Uh, the uh, this comet just gets brighter. It kind of, or at least looks brighter. So, uh, kind of watch that. Um, I am going to be out there covering the total eclipse in Texas. So I'll have to look for that again. I'll cover this more as we get closer. It's, it's getting close, but, uh, not quite ready yet to, uh, make a full video about this but i will put out a decent video of the solar eclipse 
activity, where to see it, uh, the most likely area that will have clear skies and whatnot, and we'll cover this a little bit more on the uh, Devil Comet. Kind of an interesting thing for sure. But uh, let's see, it's speeding at about 40,000 miles per hour. Looks like uh, it will reach its closest point to the sun on April 24th, after which it will slingshot around our star and be catapulted past Earth on its way back into the outer reaches of our cosmic neighborhood. Looks like the closest approach to Earth is going to be on June 2nd, uh, at which time it should be visible to the naked eye in the night sky. How cool is that? Definitely. Uh, so we'll cover that more as we get into the... Um, closer to the eclipse time period all right storm prediction center out here for uh, weather not a whole lot going on here folks that's a good sign right for now taking a little break in the severe weather department uh, look at the long-term models here in terms of uh, systems coming in California got a little system it looks like on next weekend uh, gonna bring some rain and snow that system does not look all that impressive in fact the second one behind that doesn't look all that great either. Um, that's way out there, though. Into the first week of April, we'll have to see uh, how much these change. But it does look like we could be seeing some wetter conditions to finish off the March month. What's going on, Oklahoma? Nothing. I can't believe nobody's picked up on that. That's a little odd. And, uh, you know... Let's see, so it showed up pretty nicely around the Oklahoma City area. Let me check north here. There it is as well. It's kind of hard to tell on these seismograph stations, uh, but it does look like maybe somewhere around uh, this area for the epicenter. Notice that signature shows up pretty nice and spiky there in that region. So uh, more likely it's earthquake activity that's going on here across the Edmond area. Um, and I'm not for sure if there's some old oil fields out here or not. It's possible there could be. Um, let me see here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's back out of here real quick and see if we can put this in here and see if it'll go for it. Just want to check here on Google Earth and see what we got out there. I think we checked this out before. Uh, there's uh, quite a bit of new housing development out there, and uh, it looks like what it looks like that's what's going on out here right now. Even uh, a lot of new fancy houses. Everyone's got a swimming pool out there. Goodness, <laughs> this must be the place to go to if you got uh, some decent money out there. Look at that. Everyone has a swimming pool. But uh, yeah, there's definitely. Uh, I think there's some oil fields that are even mentioned here on the USGS map. Let me go check that out real quick for that area, right around the uh, Edmond area, or just outside of there. Uh, see, look at that. All these are um, oil fields out here. I know they built a whole lot of uh, new development, so kind of did their. Did the uh, dealings out here with the, the oil and gas fields and then uh, put houses right on top of that. Goodness. So uh, I'm assuming that's where the earthquake activity is popping up. Why they're not reporting it? Possibly because they don't want to, you know, maybe bring too much attention to it. That's the only thing I can think of. But looking at the uh, seismograph stations there, it looks like there's been a handful of earthquakes there today. And nothing, no one is reporting on it. The USGS, nor the EMSC, nor the Oklahoma sites there. So something's going on out there. Uh, if you felt it, if you're around the Oklahoma area, i got quite a few viewers out there in the beautiful state of Oklahoma. Let me know where you're at and what it felt like, how long, or if you felt anything at all. But uh, I did see on some social media sites there that... Uh, some folks out there around the OKC area reporting some shaking, and obviously, uh, I looked on a look on the. Um, oh, I, I removed it now, but a simple search for Oklahoma earthquakes shows that there's been some shaking reported. To wait for the official report, but right now, uh, maybe I'm the only f official report. But I don't have any. Uh, I don't have anyone else here on the globe, USGS or EMSC, reporting anything on this. 
So we'll check back here tomorrow morning. That is small. That's a little small there for the Earth. We'll keep it normal, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I think that's about it. Seismograph stations out, there, out here look pretty quiet. Just a Monday night. No big earthquakes. But continue to be on guard. Continue to uh, be alert and stay safe out there because things can happen in a, uh, a quick blink of an eye. Well, this 5.5 was actually around the uh, Pakistan area. Right on the border, it looks like. Well, on the uh, Afghanistan side, it looks like. Yeah, that was from earlier this uh, this evening. Was felt out there across the area. All right, guys. I am out of here. Going to get some uh, sleep, I think. Hit about 70. Well, no. It was close to 80 today here where I'm at. Uh, just outside of Chico, California. I actually got a little bit of sunburn going on. Um, tomorrow's supposed to be about the same temperature here. Uh, and then Wednesday as well. And then we get some cooler weather coming in towards the end of the week and weekend with chances of rain out here across California. So that's, uh, uh, I guess I'll take that for now. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning. Take care, folks.